slide. So just in terms of the agenda for the evening, um, for starters, you will hear from our Saints uh, athletic directors, and uh, then you'll also be able to hear uh, from their, their support staff, uh, and as well as the coaching staff. As I mentioned, you'll, they will introduce themselves as well as the, the, the sport that they coach. Um, then you will hear from some of our student athletes and they will, we will host a panel uh, and you'll have a chance to meet some of them and ask them some questions. Uh, we'll then launch into a Q&A, uh, the Q&A portion of this session. Uh, you are more than welcome to add a question into the chat at any point in time. Uh, but you can also unmute, uh, well, actually you can't unmute yourself because it's a webinar, but please do add uh, to the chat at any point in time. And we will get to that question during the chat. Um, and then to round things out, uh, we will talk a little bit about next steps for the admission process. Next slide. And without further ado, I will hand this over to Coach Karoma and Coach Walrich. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you guys could be with us tonight. Um, as Mr. Kuntz said, this will be a great opportunity um, to learn a little bit more about our athletic programs and an in-depth look. Um, I am Stephanie Kroma, and I'm our girls' athletic director. Uh, I also uh, am our head softball coach, and I am, have been at the school for 18 years. Coach Walrich. Hello, my name is uh, Jeff Walrich. I'm the athletic director for boys, and this is my fifth year at St. Stephen St. Agnes. And as Mr. Kuntz said that you saw the agenda today. Um, so I just want to touch a little bit on our, a snapshot of Saints Athletics. Uh, as you see on the screen, uh, pursuing goodness as well as knowledge. That is the backbone of our athletic program and as, as our school. Uh, we, the girls will compete in the ISL, the Independent School League. The boys compete in the IAC, which is the Interstate Athletic Conference, and we both compete in VISA, the Virginia Independent School Athletic Association. One thing that I want to point out to you is our social media sites. Uh, if you like to follow us, you will see a in-depth um, behind the scenes of all of our athletic teams and our, um, and our athletic department. We currently have 29 varsity sport offerings, but if you spread that out to the lower levels, JV, and also freshman teams, we're at roughly 65 teams. Uh, what's great about this is that your son or daughter can find a place to play at St. Stephen and St. Agnes. Um, we have a wide range of athletics that we compete in, and um, you'll be able to enjoy some of these sports each season. Uh, this is just another um, look at since you some of you maybe have been on campus or done the virtual tour and some have not just kind of how what were structured um, and our facilities and then some of our accolades. So we're actually blessed with three campuses. Um, most of our athletic facilities are obviously located at our upper school campus, including two of our main turf fields, um, our main gymnasium, a renovated uh, strength and conditioning room uh, where we you know, actually are able, athletes are able to work out, uh, haven't moved back in there yet, um, yet this fall, but hopeful to, you know, fully in the, in the future, um, a wrestling room, a six lane track, lots of grass fields, um, as well as some facilities at our middle school and lower school campuses that we can use for practices as well. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, we've been blessed over the last 20 years and, and, be, and actually prior to that, um, with a lot of success in a lot of our different sports. Um, boys basketball, field hockey, boys soccer, girls lacrosse, and boys lacrosse in particular have, you know, won um, one, if not numerous, um, state titles um, in the Virginia Independent School Athletic Association that we compete in. I think, with the exception of maybe a few sports, almost every single one of our sports has won an IAC title or an ISL title on the boys and girls side, either a team title or individual athletes um, that have won league recognition um, in wrestling, swimming, and diving, track and field, some of our sports um, where there's more individual accolades. Um, and I think that the, obviously we're proud of all these championships and our coaches and our athletes, you know, they compete to win um, and are focused on the process at the same time. But then Coach Walsh, if you could slide to the next slide, I think what makes us even more proud about um, athletics here at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes is that 
it's rare actually to find someone who's not an athlete um, at our school. And you can see these are just some statistics over the last three years. Um, around 84% um, of our students in a given year um, compete in at least one sport, which I think just speaks volumes, you know, to the atmosphere that we create, whether you're a top tier caliber athlete who wants to play in college, or if you're an athlete that wants to try something new, you know, there is a place for you here. And of those 84%, um, 50 plus percent of those student athletes um, are multi-sport athletes where they're playing two or three sports. Um, and that obviously helps us have a robust offering, you know, of our sports. What's pretty awesome is if you look in the last three years, we've had 87 uh, student athletes compete at the next level. And I think what separates us is that our coaches are so such involved with our student athletes that, that are interested in going to the next level. And I think what sets them apart is that the coaches really get in depth of understanding where that best fit might be for that student athlete, both, both academically and also athletically. Uh, but there's a sample of uh, the last three years and how many each sport has put through um, to the next level. And so far this year, we have over uh, 20 that are looking for uh, going to the next level to play their sport, respectively. <clears throat> Want to introduce ourselves for the athletic department. My name is Chip Phillips. I'm the associate athletic director. Uh, I am also a graduate of St. Stephen's and St. Agnes. This is my seventh year on staff. Um, apart from anything that needs to be done around athletics, I coach varsity lacrosse and varsity football. And I was told to say a fun fact. So I think my fun fact is I have was able to coach against my brother at the varsity lacrosse level and coach with my sister at the varsity lacrosse level. I'm Deanna Jordan. Um, I've been a part of the Saints community since 2011, and I this is my sixth year as the head varsity field hockey coach. Um, as you see, I'm also the middle school athletic director and the administrative assistant to the upper school athletic directors. I teach AP psychology. I'm a senior advisor, and I also coach varsity. Uh, I'm a varsity assistant basketball coach and a middle school track and field coach. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Bashan Winton. This is my third year of being a part of the Saints community. I'm a varsity uh, assistant football coach, uh, varsity uh, winter track coach. I am also a junior advisor. Uh, and a fun fact about me is that I uh, purchased my, my one-year-old daughter uh, toys that I like to play with. Um, so the little piano that she loves to play with, I actually play and make tunes myself. Good evening. I'm uh, the head strength and, strength and conditioning coach. My name is Carl Johnson. I'm in my seventh year at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes. I am also a junior advisor. Uh, I think a cool fact about my position is I get to interact with an enormous amount of the students at school because I pretty much work with every single team after school, but we also have a lot of options for anybody who's not in athletics to come before school and train during school and PE classes. So we have many opportunities that I get to interact with probably upwards of 90% uh, of our student population. Hi everybody, my name is Melanie Stanton. Um, I've been the head athletic trainer for about 15 years and then just recently got promoted to the director of health services. So this is starting my 16th year. Um, some things that um, being an athletic trainer you can see the worst moments in a, in a student athlete um, because they're injured. But I think one of the most rewarding things is actually getting them back on the field and back to playing. I think that's one of our um, most rewarding parts of our job. Um, my name is Patrick Frost. I'm the uh, assistant athletic trainer and uh, this is my 19th year here at St. Stephen's St. Agnes School. I also teach um, a class in sports medicine and another in functional anatomy. And uh, I really enjoy um, what I do as far as teaching and I pride myself in injury prevention as well. So I um, love to educate the student athletes on uh, ways to not get injured. Um, unfortunately, uh, second what Mel said, we, um, we do end up uh, seeing student athletes um, for their injuries. And we do a lot in terms of um, physical rehabilitation in the clinical setting in the training room with the student athletes, uh, sometimes coupled with outside physical therapy, but we do a lot in-house.
Awesome. So now we're going to turn it over um, to for you guys to get to meet all of our awesome head coaches of all of our programs. There's a couple that couldn't make it tonight. Um, so when we get to them, you know, Jeff and I will will jump in um, and just let you know we're happy to connect with you with them at a later date. But we're going to start with Sean Cotter. I'm talking on mute. Uh, my name is Sean Cotter. I am a uh, head coach for cross country, winter track and spring track. Uh, with a focus on the distance um, events in, in the winter and spring seasons. And uh, we have some awesome extra coaches who specialize in sprints and jumps. Um, this is my seventh year at SSSAS. I uh, am a math teacher and I also work in our school's academic center, um, providing some assistance for students in math. Um, and some interesting facts from, from last year's seasons are boys had one of their best finishes. They finished eighth in the state in cross country. Our girls finished fifth, um, and in the winter track season, our girls finished fifth, our boys finished sixth. Uh, we had an individual champ, Malcolm Johnson, on the boys' side, and we had a female athlete of the meet, Naya Cummings. Um, she had three runner-up finishes, and she was um, she earned female athlete of the meet as the highest score of the state meet. Hi, I'm Deanna Jordan. I already introduced myself, but I'm back with my fun fact about the field hockey program. Um, each season, we create field hockey families, which consist of member uh, players from all three levels, so seventh through twelfth grade. And uh, we use these families to have like fun competitions and before big games, the families will make each other goodie bags and things like that. And I think for younger students coming in, the families are instantly like a source of support for them. And when they're upperclassmen and seniors, um, they really recognize that support that was so important for them. And they look forward to that leadership position to provide that support and to be those mentors for our younger saints and to teach them what the field hockey family is all about. Hello, my name is Bernard Joseph. I'm the head football coach at St. Stephen's St. Agnes. This is my 14th year actually at the school um, as I volunteered a few years been head football coach now going into my 11th season. Um, I'm a full-time teacher at the lower school. I teach physical education. And a fun fact about our program, we, uh, we go away for camp in preseason and our talent shows that our students put on are amazing. So if you're a football player and you have a talent, we will have an opportunity to see it and have a great day. Uh, coach Michael Arandia could not be here tonight. Uh, but he is in his first year, and we're really excited for him to be a part of the Saints community, and he's excited also. So if there's any soccer folks, boys soccer folks that are on here, I will get you in touch with him uh, after this session. And unfortunately, also on the girls' soccer side, um, our coach, uh, former coach Chris Arnold, who'd been with our program and has grown our program tremendously. Um, he's also the deputy director at ASA, Alexandra Soccer Association, and their program has grown um, just really exponentially over the last several years. Um, and so he has had to step away from his first time role here with us at St. Stephen's and St. Anna's. So we're in the process of looking for a new head coach for our hopeful spring, our hopeful fall season in February. Coach Jaffa. I'm John Jaffa, I'm the girls uh, tennis coach. Uh, this is my 13th year at the school and with the program, this is my 10th year as a head coach. Um, I also work at the middle school. I've been a history teacher at the middle school and I'm currently the dean of students at the middle school. Um, and I'm here hear a lot of these student uh, panelists talk because I taught a lot of them when they were in seventh grade. Um, about our program, uh, we started a tradition a couple years ago. We have this big, um, giant, fuzzy tennis ball that uh, whichever girl uh, kind of gets the most effort that match gets to sign in. So now we've got this tennis ball that has been kind of signed through the years by uh, lots of our different players. Um, so yeah, nice to uh, hope to talk about it. And uh, Coach Jaff, it sounds like your sound was pretty garbled um, there for, for a second. Um, so at least the sound that was coming through, but I think for those of you that did not hear um, the fun fact, because I just, I know it just because I've seen them sign this fall is that the girls tennis team has this huge, huge fuzzy tennis ball um, you know, that they all um, sign and pass around you know, during games. Um, and he, John works at our middle school, he's our Dean of Students, and he has had an opportunity to teach, be a Dean, as well as coach many and many of our um, girls as they come through, which is awesome. So. Thank you. 
No problem. <laughs> coach Nixon. Hi, I'm uh, Coach Nancy Nixon. I'm the head varsity coach for the volleyball team, and this is my second year with the program. I'm excited to be returning. Um, in my day job, I am the uh, part owner and uh, director of operations for a little consulting firm, and we work with the State Department and uh, small satellite industry, so that keeps me busy during the day. Um, a fun fact about volleyball and our program is that um, at the highest levels of women play, the ball can track up to about 65 miles per hour. So we like to have fun in our gym. Last year, I broke out the speed, bun, speed gun and let the girls uh, rip at the ball. And they had a great time. And uh, one of the players clocked over 45 miles per hour. So that was really amazing for high school volleyball and, and super fun to see everybody going for it. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Jones. Uh, this is my fifth year at St. Stephen St. Agnes. I work at the middle school. I teach uh, physical education. I also coach middle school football, middle school track, but we hang our hat on the, on the varsity side of things. So I coach varsity basketball. One fun fact about our program is we had five of our starters last year receive an athletic scholarship. So we were pretty excited about that. And we also finished uh, in the top 25. So that was pretty exciting as well. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, Calvin Crenshaw, who is our girls basketball coach, um, could not be here this evening. I believe that he is going into his 16th or 17th year um, coaching for us at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes. But as Coach Jordan mentioned, she is an assistant coach for the varsity basketball team. And we also have one of our uh, varsity captains um, on this evening. Coach Fleury. Hi, uh, my name is Brian Fleury. I'm the head uh, varsity ice hockey coach. It's my first year at St. Stephen's St. Agnes. So I'm very excited to be there with the kids. I'm very excited to be with the program. I think the fun facts will come, at, you know, next year, unfortunately, that we don't have any yet, but I'm hoping to build a lot. So it's going to be an exciting year and we want to, uh, you know, hope new and exciting kids want to come out and play. And Coach Styles, we're going to go to you because Coach Cotter um, already introduced himself as the head coach of three sports. So up to you, Coach Styles. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Evan Styles. I'm the head coach of the swim and dive team. Uh, I've been coaching high school swimming for 28 years now. Uh, this will be my sixth year at St. Stephen's in St. Agnes. Um, I'm also the VISA swim and dive president. Um, so that keeps me busy. Uh, my full-time job is I'm the head coach of the Arlington Aquatic Club. Uh, so I basically coach swimming all the time, all the time. Um, so um, that's what I do. Uh, a fun fact, I was trying to think about a fun fact. Um, my fun fact might not be that fun, but it's fun for me at least. Um, I try to encourage everyone to come out for swimming or diving. I think swimming is a great sport. It's also a lifelong sport that you can take with you for the rest of your life. So um, it doesn't really matter how good or bad you are. If you want to come out and try, uh, I encourage you to do it because as a team, we have a great time. Coach Humphreys, are you, your Coach Humphreys, you on here? Yep. Um, I'm Coach Humphreys. I am the head wrestling coach here at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes. I also teach ninth and 11th grade history. Um, I am in my eighth year now um, and sixth year as the head wrestling coach. Um, I think that a fun fact or an interesting fact about our program is, you know, last year we had two wrestlers who were both pretty new as freshmen um, and they were sophomores last year. They both got to one round before the placing round of the national preps tournament. So, you know, we're hoping that we have some sort of a season this year, but even if we don't, they will be seniors uh, the following year and looking forward to what they're going to do on a national stage. Um, but I think the most important thing about our program is how we, we build uh, young men um, to be good people overall and we use wrestling and you know we use teaching to to teach them those life skills of how to be a good person how to bounce back from adversity and use the the tools that wrestling gives you to do that uh next is coach supple jim supple for baseball he cannot be here this evening uh he's been at st Stephen st agnes for quite a long time he is also the director of transportation. Uh, Coach Sup, if anybody is interested in playing baseball, we will get that information and Coach Sup will reach out to you after the 
webinar. Coach Dodds. Yeah, good evening, everybody. First off, thanks for taking the time to be here. Uh, I know time is precious and I wanna make sure we save it. Um, this is my 10th year here at St. Stephen St. Agnes, which is incredible to say. It feels like the blink of an eye. Um, and I feel like up until this point, I've coached everything here short of Quidditch. So um, my experience here was both at the middle school and now at the upper school. I'm also an associate dean of students for grades nine and 10. Um, so for those of you who would be applying into those classes, I'd be working with your sons, daughters, um, children directly in terms of their student experience here, which is very important to us as in terms of community, which you'll hear about clearly um, the more time you spend with us. Um, I think in terms of our program, we, we have multiple alumni who um, are currently playing professionally, which we're certainly proud of. We have multiple alumni who have won national championships at the next level, which we're proud of. Um, and we have multiple coaches in our program who also currently play professionally, which we're proud of, but I think, and I have two other coaches who are on this call who are a part of our program as well, who I'm sure attest to it, but what we're most proud of is the fact that we've got guys who um, are also finalists for what is called the Senior uh, Class Award in the NCAA level, which again is in terms of character and community, what we're trying to build and be uh, about in terms of cultivating our young men here. So I'll send you the links in a second to a couple of those alumni, one of whom is Isaiah Davis Allen. He was actually named the Huntley MLL Man of the Year, which is the highest accolade you can get in professional lacrosse. Um, so again, one of the many things that we're proud of here. Thanks for the time. Oh, Coach Jenkins, we can't we can't hear you. So Coach Jenkins, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Now we can hear you. Good, thank you. Um, I'm Kathy Jenkins, head varsity girls lacrosse coach, and I also coach middle school tennis, basketball, and lacrosse. Um, I have been at the school. This is my 50th year, but 44 coaching lacrosse. So I'm very committed to this program. Um, I asked the girls today what their favorite fun fact of our team, and they all agreed that spring break trips really help on the team and bring them all together and team dinners. So we usually travel at spring break. Obviously this year is different, but they love trips to Florida and being able to get a suntan. So we have to have fun with playing hard. And Coach Burke, I think I saw you on here. Yes. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Um, I'm Coach Burke, um, proud class of 2003. Um, and this will be going into my third year as the head varsity coach. Uh, Bernard Joseph is um, one of our assistants and we have a girls team, a JV and a varsity team that we're going to be filling this year. Um, right now, we don't have any uh, acts for, for the team, but um, this year we're looking pretty strong where we have I think about six or seven um, guys and girls that should be doing pretty well in the IAC and the ISL. And we're um, looking to send a couple, hopefully this year, to play either club golf or at some type of collegiate level where they're heading. So this type of students that we're looking for, those even if you never played golf and you want to, we'll help you develop those skills, but truly have a passion to be in a community and be leaders, but also be a uh, Great golfers. Awesome. And as I mentioned, um, on top of being our athletic director for girls, I am also the head softball coach. And so this will be my 18th year coaching softball. Um, and I think a, a fun fact about the softball program that is not unique to softball, a couple of our girls teams do this, um, but to holding true to our St. Agnes roots, uh, where Coach Jenkins started in lacrosse, there is a cheer that many of our girls teams do um, prior to the beginning you know, of our contests. And it's uh, she who has the will to win never shall be beat. And there's different variations of it in terms of tempo and you know what the girls say at the end, but um, it's a it's a piece that we have held on to um, for for decades and decades uh, within the softball program, but also all our other girls programs here. Unfortunately, uh, Kim Tai cannot be uh, here today. Uh, and again, if you're interested in tennis, I will get your information to him so he can reach out to you personally. So without further ado, now that we have met all of our coaches, we are going to turn it over to um, our students who we have on the panel um, this evening. And so they are going to introduce themselves and say a little bit about them. And then we will move into our question and answer. 
So Keen, we'll start with you. Hi, uh, my name is Keen Cornick. I've been here since junior kindergarten. So this is my 14th year here. And I play lacrosse and I also participate in a breakfast club. And I used to play soccer and basketball. Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I've been here since sixth grade. So this is my seventh year and I play soccer, swimming and track and field. Hi, my name's Shimani. I'm a senior and this I've been at St. Stephen St. Agnes since I was in first grade and I play basketball and volleyball. Hi, I'm Tristan. I came to St. Stephen St. Agnes as a sophomore, so this is my third year and I play field hockey and lacrosse. Hi, I'm Barrett. Um, I've been here since sixth grade, so this is my seventh year at St. Stephen St. Agnes and I play basketball and I do breakfast club. And Ivan, are you here? Or did we lose Ivan? I think his Wi-Fi just cut out. That's what he just oh. said, but he should be back in. Oh, okay. Ivan, are you back? Uh, I'm Ivan Madanga. Uh, I've been at this. School. I play football and I do wrestling and track and field. Awesome, thank you students. So um, now we're gonna go ahead and move into our Q&A. Um, and we have um, some questions that we're gonna ask the athletes, but we also welcome all of you who are attending tonight. If there is a question that you're dying to know about our program, or if you wanna get some perspective um, you know, from our student athletes, this is the time. So please feel free to put questions um, in the Q&A or questions in the chat, and we will try to get to as many as we can. Um, and then also just a friendly reminder uh, that we um, are going to be sending, or Mr. Coons and Ms. Blanding are going to be sending out um, the Google form too. They will re-put it back in the chat for you to indicate um, sports and things that you're interested in so we can make sure we get you in contact with the right coaches. And I think they're going to send that to you now. But we're going to go ahead and start with our first question, um, which is, what does it mean to be a part of the Saints athletic program? What is one thing uh, that you will always remember and carry with you? So who would like to take that one? Um, I, I can take that one. Uh, one thing that, especially in, like in the whole Saints community, but especially in the lacrosse program, we pride ourselves on like being a family. So it's not only like taking care of each other on the field, but also off the field. And um, I don't know, I just think that's gone a long, a long way in helping us become a close team. And then that also translates to the field really well. And uh, one thing that I'll always remember uh, is it was actually like, after we lost um, the IC championship, but it wasn't that I like, obviously that moment was terrible, but I was just shocked at like how, um, how tight knit everybody was after the loss. Like people could have easily just like been really upset and mad at each other, but I thought we handled it like in a very professional way. Thank you, Keen. Any of our other students? something you'll always remember, carry with you, what makes being Saints Athletics so important to you? Um, I can just add on like, what makes the athletic program so special is like all of our support for each other. And it doesn't really matter what sport you play or what grade you're in. Everyone is always supporting each other. And even if you're playing in a game and you look behind you um, up to the stands, there are a bunch of students there who play different sports or in different grades and they're all cheering for you because we're all from one school and in one program. And I think that that's really special. Okay, we'll move on to our second question. What is one of your favorite sports moments here at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes School? I, I can say I can speak to this one. So I think for me on the basketball team, one of my favorite moments um, that comes around every year, maybe not this year, but hopefully next year is Sleepy Thompson. And I think starting out as someone in sixth, sixth grade and going to every game and watching Sleepy Thompson, watching the varsity players play in that atmosphere, I think that was always something that I wanted to be a part of in high school. So whenever I was, you know, playing high school, high school basketball, I think that was something that I would always look forward to each season at first watching those games, but then last year playing, playing those games and being on the bench with the team in those games. And I think that's a really important part um, 
of the basketball like community community at St. Stephen's. I think it's an awesome moment for everyone to enjoy at St. Stephen's. Just to add on to that, one of my other uh, favorite events is Seminary Hill Cup. Um, it's where the all of the girls fall sports teams at St. Stephen's and all the girls fall sports teams at Episcopal High School. They play against each other all in one day. And it's just an awesome opportunity, not only to celebrate girls sports, but just to be able to cheer on our teammates. And it's, it's so fun because girls volleyball is typically the last, the girls varsity volleyball is typically the last game. And so we really love to go and um, cheer on everybody else before we have to go watch our games. And it's just so awesome to see everyone cheer everyone went on and support each other throughout the day. Also for Seminary Hill Cup, we have a huge dinner, which is one of my personal favorites because for the last two years, we have had a giant lip sync competition. And one of the things I really appreciate is everyone is very competitive, but in a nice supporting way. So it's really fun to have everyone come out and give it their best. And I'm on the field hockey team and it's like a big deal. We did costumes. We practiced it like three times before. Like, it's just a really cool way to celebrate community. Um, One other event that like, I'm not really a part of the football team, but every year they have a, a big game under the lights. And every other year it's against um, Episcopal, which is like the school across the street on a Friday. And those games are just like really fun to be, it's really fun to be a part of that atmosphere. Any other thoughts from any of our other students? Oh, by the way, hey King, we don't say that name. It's called the, the school across the street now, just so you'll remember. Awesome. So um, our next question is, um, is it easy to be a part of a team here? I think people are already kind of getting a sense a little bit that the answer to that is yes. Um, but what are some activities that the teams do off of the field or off of the court or out of the pool um, in terms of team bonding, community service, leadership training? What are what else could um, our prospective student expect? Um, so I know for field hockey, um, two years ago, we were going to go to the pumpkin patch and we had a bunch of community service that we were going to do, but sadly it ended up getting canceled, which was sad. And Coach Jenkins touched on it earlier for lacrosse, we always have team dinner. And it's so nice because one of the cool things about the community here is like, I'm a senior, but I'm able to get in touch with all the freshmen and the sophomores and the juniors and really get to know all these different people and just create memories on and off the field. Um, just to add on to that, something I really love about our girls basketball team is that when we have Saturday morning practices, sometimes we like to go after practice and go eat breakfast together as a team. And that's just really fun for us because we all get to know each other more. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. And then also on the girls volleyball team, um, we really like to uh, blend both teams, the JV and the varsity team, so we can get to know each other, whether that's like through games before practice or um, just icebreaker games or getting to know each other on the bus. So then we're not two separate teams. We're all one family and one program. Yeah, um, the lacrosse team. So like one thing we did was uh, we went to a escape room in Old Town. So that was really fun. And then we like do a ton of like different small events every year. But one thing that stays consistent is we uh, walk in this uh, thing called the Maddie Miracle Walk. And it's like uh, to raise money uh, for children with childhood cancer. And like, I just think that's a really good uh, event to like reflect on the season and like everybody just kind of comes together and it's like a nice wrap up. Um, oh, also, oh, oh, um, for girls soccer, um, a couple years ago, we did a, a trip before our season. So it was in the summer. Um, and we went canoeing and it, that was really fun just to like get to know everyone and sort of bond before the season actually began. And then in season, we do a lot of like frozen yogurt trips after practice or like dinners um, just to get closer as a team. Uh, oh, uh, oh, Ivan, you can go, my bad. Also, um, I know for football, like Coach Joseph mentioned, we have a camp where, um, a preseason camp where we go out to, we went out to Shrine Mont and we had practice out there overnight. And 
in addition to the talent show, like all the hard practices we had and getting up at seven in the or five in the morning to run up hills. Uh, it, was, it was, even though it's tough at times, it's also a good experience to bond with our teammates. And also wrestling when we go to um, overnight tournaments and meets in hotels against other, uh, I guess other teams. There's a lot of time for bonding within the team there too. Um, oh, can I, can I add something, Coach Walrich? Yeah, absolutely. So for basketball, what um, we did last year, um, we would go to um, games to watch former alumni play. So last year we watched um, Charles Thompson play at Towson. And so we, just the whole basketball team went up to Towson to watch him play, see him play since uh, he used to come, he went to St. He graduated St. Stephen's um, two years ago. Yeah, so he graduated in 20, was it 19, 2019? Yeah, he's playing at Towson. So we all went up there to watch him play. And then going off of what Ivan said, I think um, the overnight trips are also an awesome way to bond with your team. Um, so this year, or like, I think this speaks for everyone, all the state championships, you guys are all, I mean, those are all away from the school. So you're going to be spending, spending a night with your team. And I think that's an awesome way to bond with your team. Like you get to room with one of your, a couple of your teammates and just spend some quality time together for like a couple of days, which I think is awesome. Yeah, that's pretty exciting here at St. Stephen's St. Agnes. And I know probably this next question has probably crossed the parents' mind. Um, is it hard to play sports and keep up with the workload here at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes? And what do your coaches do to help you manage the workload? And I think some coaches can jump in here also and just kind of uh, tell the folks what you guys do uh, within your individual programs, because I know you guys do some outstanding things with academics. So I'll leave that question open. I'll go first. So with uh, with boys basketball, we uh, we have a study hall since we practice late. We practice from five to seven. So from roughly around 3.30 to about 4.45, we have a study hall, maybe a film session, but that's the opportunity for our guys to, um, to get their studies done. Um, for lacrosse, so we travel like a good amount. So we go to Charlottesville, we go to Virginia Beach. Sometimes we go up to Baltimore, Philly. And like this year we're supposed to go to um, Texas, but that didn't happen because of Corona. But um, one big thing that I learned was how to manage my time. So like, uh, you just got to be on top of it with your teachers. So like, they'll help you out and they understand if you have to leave class early to go to a far away game. But at the same time, you have like that responsibility to keep like doing all the work that you're supposed to do. And so if anything, it just teaches you how to manage time better. For me, honestly, like being in season, um, I'm almost more productive than being out of season just because like, with what limited time I do have, I use that to do homework and, and know that that's the only time I have to do that. So I really have to like use that to um, catch up on work. But um, if I like communicate with a coach that I have like a big paper coming up or a test that I need to study for, then a lot of times um, they will like cut practice short or like give me a day off to catch up on work. So I think they're very flexible with that. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Um, most of the lacrosse coaches, they look at your grades like after like a quarter or something. And if you aren't doing too well, then they'll like shoot you a text like saying you got to do better. But then like if you're really doing really poorly, they'll make sure that like they try not to. But sometimes a chunk of practice has to get cut out for that specific person so that they can get their homework done and back on track. We know everything, Keen. We know everything. Um, we always tell our players, and I know a lot of other coaches on this call do the same, or we're teacher coaches first. Um, so we think about scholar athleticism the same way. It's scholar first. Um, ath you know, athleticism and everything else is icing on the cake, and that's certainly where character lessons come in. Um, but, yeah, I think everybody in this, in this call who's a part of this school, regardless of the program, understands that principle and sticks to it. Um, I know from a football standpoint, we have a philosophy that we share in the academic um, values that the school has. And so just as we expect teachers to allow them to leave early for games, um, we do the same thing for them, our players, 
as it relates to practice. If a student has a test or if a student has a paper and they need to leave practice early or not make practice, we, we give them that time to do that um, because we know how important it is for them to strive academically at the school. And we also have two coaches that are in the building that are constantly checking um, on their progress. Uh, I know Coach Humphreys and most of the teachers here who work at the upper school are advisors and they have our students in their classrooms or as advisees and we communicate all the time. We talk about how they're doing their progress. And so it's a concerted effort by everyone involved in making sure that their academics are, are done properly. And just so our parents and for our students know, um, obviously, you know, um, as Mike Jones mentioned, like boys basketball does practice late and a couple of our teams um, that are off site. So ice hockey, swimming and diving golf might have some non traditional practice times, um, either in the morning or, you know, in the evenings, but we try to hold to a, you know, a 3.30 to 6 o'clock timeframe, you know, for most of our sports and for our freshman and JV teams, we have a 5.30 hard stop just because, you know, we are a, a college preparatory school and we do and the academic piece does come first. Um, and so we want to make sure that there's time for all of our students to make sure that they can complete all the work that's that's necessary for them. So um, that is definitely something just programmatically um, that's at the top of our mind in the athletic department. All right, so next question I think is probably particularly for Tristan, um, but I know a, a lot of you also entered in the middle school, but Tristan, um, you were one of our few athletes that, you know, didn't start in our lower school or our middle school. So what was it like um, for you, you know, coming in new after many of our athletes have been playing together or know each other for 10 years and, you know, how did you feel welcomed into the Saints community? So I've switched schools a lot, I think around maybe three to four times. And I've had the most warm welcome here. I remember I had moved here, I think August, right before the school started my sophomore year. And for field hockey, we have to run something called the gauntlet, which is our run test. I don't want to go into it. Um, and I walked up not knowing anyone. And I basically like put my stuff down. And once you get to know me, I'm a pretty outgoing person. But first up, like I don't want to, I'm very shy. And I remember seniors who I believe are sophomores in college now came up to me and they're like, hi, like, what's your name? Oh, you're new. It's so nice to meet you. And I ended up running the run test with them. And throughout the whole entire week, they were so welcoming and just really helped me get through it. And throughout the year, I became really close with them. I still talk to them when they're in town. I still get lunch with them. And I was lucky enough that some of them also play lacrosse. So I got to be with them during that time too. So I think one of the things that's really cool about St. Stephen's is regardless of your age or like when you're coming in, everyone makes the effort to make sure like you know where your classes are, you have friends, like if you need someone to talk to, they can help you find a coach that's willing to be there for you, which all of them are. And I just overall had a really, really good experience. Awesome. Coach Barrett, you want to do our next question? Some of them already talked about some signature events, but we got lots of others. Yeah. Um, tell our guests about some of our signature events here at St. Stephen St. Agnes and what makes them so special. Um, I can go back to talk, like, I can go a little bit more in depth to Sleepy Thompson. So Sleepy Thompson is a basketball tournament that our school has once a year. And we invite teams from around the area. Some of them are crosstown rivals. Some of them are in our conference. And we play, hopefully we play, we play three games every year. In the last two years, we've won. So, and two years, two years ago was the first time we've won in like 12 years. So that was an awesome moment. And I remember being in the stands and just being like, this is crazy. And the atmosphere of it as a high schooler is awesome you get you get there's a giant student section almost everyone comes out to watch the games their themes every game and i think it's and after the first basket everyone throws a roll of toilet paper on the court just that's that's been a tradition for years ever since i've been here and even as a middle schooler you'll be looking at the senior or the high school student section being like you know what i want to be over there doing that whatever they're doing going crazy and doing those chants so I think it's an awesome event. And I uh, was so happy to be on the team last year to be a part of that. And maybe we'll have it this year, but ne definitely next year, if you're a basketball player, be excited for that. It's an awesome, awesome time. 
not to like focus on sleepy particularly because like we have a ton of really cool events coming in as a new student we can't explain sleepy to you until you've experienced it it is a once in a lifetime experience i remember my friends when i came in they're like oh my gosh like we have sleepy like it's themed and everyone goes all out for their costumes and i had no idea what i was getting myself into and like when i get married i'm going to bring it up at my wedding it's something that i'm going to remember for the rest of my life Awesome. I know the girls already talked a little bit about Seminary Hill Cup. Um, what about um, Ivan or Shimani, some of our other events, or Emily, um, you know, in the spring with Draper? Do you guys want to touch on some of those? Um, for girls basketball, we have our tip-off tournament every year, and that's basically at the beginning of the season. And it's two nights, so we have a quarter, we have a semifinals and a finals, and that's just really awesome for our team. Um, they're typically late night games, so um, it's really great team bonding beforehand and getting ready in the locker room. And it's just a really great start to our season because um, it's at the beginning and it's part of our first couple of games and it really gets us energized and uh, it's just a lot of fun. So. And in the spring, um, like Coach Chroma said, we have Draper, which is a track and field meet. And it's a huge like two day event um, where we have tons of schools come and compete um, and it's just really fun to like compete against all these other schools and alongside your teammates and have um, other people from different sports who are like practicing on the field next to um, the track, then they look over and they cheer for you and um, it's very fun. Uh, wrestling also has the, um, the holiday classic in the winter. And it's really cool because a lot of other schools come to school and most of our most of our uh, wrestling meets are away. So it's a good opportunity for us to wrestle in front of our classmates. So, yeah. Another cool um, event that probably not many people know of um, is that we, um, every season, we're also fortunate enough um, to be able to invite some alumni to come back and speak to a lot of our senior leaders. Um, Coach Joseph's daughter was our most recent speaker, um, who was also an alum who played volleyball here and also ran track um, and knocked it out of the park. But um, we offer some leadership series, you know, for student athletes, you know, to be able to connect with some of our alumni. And we've had some, you know, great messages um, over the years. Coach, we have a, uh, a good question here from the Q&A chat room um, just for our students. Obviously, the students who are on the call right now are wonderful, uh, gifted student athletes. And a question about uh, students who might not be um, as competitive or as athletic maybe as some other students, um, how, does, how do things kind of unfold for them when it comes to competing uh, on team sports? Did one of you, one of our students want to take that? Because I know a lot of you guys have a primary sport, but a lot of you guys also uh, maybe tried something new in your high school experience or tried something when you were a freshman that you hadn't done prior. Um, I can take that. So my main look, um, sport is lacrosse. I will be playing in college, but I play field hockey and um, I'm not the best, but I really, really, really enjoy it. And I feel like it just, there's an environment where um, if it's your main sport, those people who play it all the time don't see you as like, oh, I'm not going to give them the ball. Like, I don't want to play with them. Like it, they push you to be on their level and they're there for you if you need anything. And I've become friends with a lot of people who maybe might not be in my sport. And I know that I've learned a lot from them. So I think it's really important to have those people who maybe it isn't your main sport, but because they're out there, like they have the grit, they have the enthusiasm, they have the passion. And I think that's what really is a like certain part of the team that where you can have the talent, but you need the hard work behind it. Awesome, thank you so much, Tristan. And Emily, I wonder if you could speak a little bit about what Coach Styles touched on, you know, and particularly for the swim program, which I think also is very similar to a lot of our other programs where we welcome all people to come and join and be a part of it and what that atmosphere is like with swimming and some of our other sports. Yeah, so like, um, sort of like Tristan, swimming is not my main sport. Um, my main sport is soccer, but um, I do swimming and I also do track. And, and I think in both of those sports, swimming and track, um, it's such a big team sport, even though we're not like competing um, 
as a team, it's more like individual. Um, we all come together and we're super inclusive. And even if you're not the best runner or the fastest swimmer, um, even just being on that team um, is so fun and, and like everyone's supporting each other and cheering each other on. Um, and just like the experience of being on a team and practicing with them and like bonding with them and making friends through that. I think that's really important, even if you're not the top athlete in that specific sport. And then Ivan, I don't know, maybe if you want to also speak on, um, you know, football, because obviously there's a, you have a lot of skilled football players on the team and then coach Joseph could also speak up to that too, but um, the environment that you guys create within the football program. Yeah, a lot of um, freshmen that come in that either haven't played for a long time or aren't that skilled, there's obviously a place for them at the team. We have a JV team and our varsity players are always welcoming to the younger players. And we're always trying to lead and teach them to become better players eventually. And I'll say that probably the majority of our team are not football players. They're not here to play football. Um, they're here to become better athletes. And I think one of the things that we try to strive ourselves in is to make them better men. Um, I think the camaraderie of the team, the leadership skills, um, just being a part of the team is really what it's all about. And so we really work on our team being one cohesive uh, group and working together and, and building friendships and, and becoming men. I think that's the biggest thing. But more so than that, um, there's a place for everyone, I think, at our school. There's a sport for everyone. There's a place. Um, you don't have to be a super athlete to play. As coaches, we want everyone. We want as many players as we can get on our team. And I, I think it's a life-changing experience being a part of a team, being a part of the Saints team and, and being playing with your, your classmates. Um, yeah, one more thing that's like, it wouldn't be a traditional team, but it is a sport, is uh, this thing called Breakfast Club. So basically we uh, lift before school, like uh, lift weights. And like, I've seen guys go, or guys and girls who've gone in there and like, let's just say like some people, they can barely even lift the bar up. And then there's other people who can squat a house. They can squat like four or 500 pounds. So just like, there's a huge variety of talent and athleticism uh, in Breakfast Club. And I think that it's actually another like very uh, welcoming community because they just take every type of person. Awesome. Coach Roach, you want to ask our, our last question and then we'll see if we've got some more questions in the chat. So we encourage um, some more questions in the chat or in the Q&A because we've got a couple minutes left um, and then we'll turn it back over to Mr. Coons. For those that will continue your sport in college, uh, can you speak on how your coaches have prepared you and how they've helped you in the college recruiting process? So I mentioned earlier that I will be playing lacrosse at Vanderbilt. And for me, my recruiting window was my freshman year and we we're allowed to commit beginning of junior year in September. And I sat down with um, coach Jordan, who isn't even my main sport. And she was like, what are you looking at for college? Like, how can I help you get there? And she was there the whole entire time. And also coach Jenkins has been there for me the whole entire time. I could call her whenever I had a question, whenever I needed feedback on what I needed to, be, to do better, or if I needed her to reach out to a school for me. And we're so lucky here because we have such a great support system that they look at our grades, they look at our athletics, they look at our like personality, who we are as a person, and they're just so willing to help us in any way possible. Yeah, um, I'm going to Washington Lee to play lacrosse. And um, I mean, I was, I didn't do all the homework I should have done uh, in terms of like reaching out to people as soon as I should have. And um, I just remember getting a couple of texts and calls from coach Dawes and coach Phillips being like, what are you doing? Like, You, you got to get on top of it. And um, yeah, uh, without them, there's probably little to no chance that I'd be going where I am. And I just like, I just remember really specifically, uh, I think it was, I was in eighth grade and one of the senior captains on a uh, lacrosse team, he committed to Penn State to play lacrosse after he graduated, I think. So I think it was June of his senior year. 
And I think that just speaks to like how different the connections and communications are at our school compared to any other school. Cause I'd be impressed if anybody else could say that. And I think what um, you will find with all of our coaches, whether it's Coach Jones in the basketball program, Coach Football, Coach Joseph in the football program, Coach Hundries, Coach Dodds, Coach Jenkins, Coach Styles, you name it, um, our coaches are here for these athletes, regardless of what their future um, career passions might be. If they want to play collegiately, you know, if they want to go into the army, if they want to, we are here to help them in whatever you know their quest is here. Um, and so that's something I think that we pride ourselves on again is that coach relationship, you know, with the student athletes. Um, and there was one question that came in the chat that I'm kind of going to ask each student to say something. But the question in the chat was, it, was it common for students to be involved in multiple sports as well as activities and clubs? So I'm wondering if each one of you, because I know how well-rounded you are, if you could say one thing that you're involved in besides the sports um, that you mentioned. So, um, or think something you're passionate about or a subject that you love, because I, I definitely think that there is, our, our student athletes are not just student athletes. They are so well-rounded and involved in so many things that our school has to offer. Um, I'm the, along with basketball and volleyball, I'm the senior editor of our school newspaper and I've been on staff on the newspaper since sophomore year and that has been just really awesome learning so many different skills about communication and journalism and you can totally manage something like that with sports and it's just been a really awesome opportunity to connect with teachers on a constant basis and learn more about other students. So. Um, for me, uh, other than being on the basketball team, I'm part of the SCA and the president of the SCA. And this has been my sec last year. I was the co-president for or, or co-vice president for our grade on the SCA. So this is my second year on SCA. And I think SCA is an awesome thing that everyone should consider when coming to the school. And Barry, can you, can you tell everybody what SCA stands for? So and who you guys work with? Oh, Student Council um, Association, I, I believe. And we work with um, the, like, so I work with uh, Ms. McGuire on, like, communicating with, like, the seniors and the students about how, uh, I guess, the administration can best help the students at the school. And I think um, for my role as being on SEA is the main part is communication, as I just said. And I think SEA can teach students how to communicate at, at the best level with other students that you may not know when coming to the school. So you may be um, like as the president of the school, I'm going to have to communicate with freshmen and sophomores that are maybe new and I don't know, but I think that's an awesome part of the SCA. You get to meet new people and make new relationships. Um, oh, oh, you go, Emily. <laughs> um, for me, I'm also part of the SCA. Um, I'm a senior athletic council representative along with Keen. Um, and I'm also president or co-president of the Baking Club. Um, so that's just one of many clubs that we have. Um, and it's really fun to be involved in outside of athletics. Um, yeah, like Emily said, I'm on SCA, but I've also been in a jazz band since my freshman year. And I'm the uh, one of the section leaders actually in the trumpet section. So yeah, I love music and uh, yeah, I just love that we offer it here. Uh, also, this year, I'm going to be co-leading the first generation affinity club because um, uh, I'm an immigrant. So that's something that I'm passionate about, reaching out to other students who are first generation and immigrants. I'm on yearbook staff, which is really fun because I get to put together the book. So I get to take pictures of all the events and I get to write articles and it's basically a big mix of all the different medias like literature and like all that fun stuff so it's cool because I get to talk to a bunch of different people and I'm kind of like behind the scenes of the whole year so something super fun and I think what you'll see from all of our students is that like they are very multi-talented and there's a space for all of that not just athletics not just academics for them people to try something new and be a part of something that maybe they're passionate about and We've had athletes that have also been involved in our performing arts, as Keen mentioned, either musicians or performers, people who are involved in various clubs who are involved in academic pursuits, you know, and things that we offer at the school. So um, that's actually something that we pride ourselves and value ourselves on too, is that our athletes are not just athletes, like Coach Dodd said, they're scholars first, you know, they're involved within our community. That's a key piece of, of who we are. 
let's see, do we have any other um, questions? Um, so there's a question that came in. So Coach Stiles, this one is specific for you um, and for Emily about how the swim team has performed recently um, in competition. Coach Stiles or, or Emily, who wants to take it? <laughs> I was looking at Emily to see if she was getting ready to do it. Um, so recently, um, we have one of the things that we didn't talk about was the tri-city championship um which is also a great event from the swimming and diving perspective we get to compete with tc williams and bishop Ayrton. and um a couple years ago we won it a couple uh a couple times so that was pretty exciting um how else have we done we've had uh, our boys team was really successful at States, uh, a few years back, but I think we got second place or something like that. I can't remember third place maybe. Um, so, uh, most importantly, I think we've just had a bunch of individuals that have done really well. Uh, Emily said she's not really a swimmer, but, uh, <laughs> she's actually a good swimmer. Um, makes States, goes to States, participates, breaks the school record in the 50 freestyle. Um, so, uh, we've had a lot of individual accolades. Um, our diving has been incredible over the last couple of years. Um, so uh, we're doing good. Emily, I'm going to let you say something. Um, I mean, I agree with everything you said. Uh, we have a lot of individual and relay events that go to states. Um, last year, we did really well at states. We had a lot of um, people in relays who finished in the top six. Um, we also had a lot of like IAC and ISL, um, I guess, recognitions. So a lot of our swimmers um, got those accolades and that was, that was really good. And also our dive team started out a couple years ago as like three people, um, but it's really grown. And I think this year we had like 12 to 15 people. I don't remember exactly how many, but um, the dive team has also really grown. So that's been great to see. Awesome. Thank you guys for answering that sport specific question. Coach Wallach, do you want to put up our last slide just so that um, all of our attendees can, you know, see um, contact information and this, um, Mr. Coons, correct me if I'm wrong, but this will also, this recording will also be sent out to those of you who are here, um, as well as individuals that missed. Um, so no need to frantically, you know, write down um, information that you see. But this is just um, a recap of if you, um, if there was a particular coach who you'd like to connect with um, and learn more information about their program or one of us in the athletic department, um, these are all emails um, that you can reach out to. Um, and I believe that um, Ms. Blanding and uh, Mr. Coons are also going to use the form that you filled out for us to then make sure that all of the coaches have your contact information so that they can also be individually reaching out to you after this to give you more specifics on their programs in terms of a follow-up communication. So is, Mr. Kuntz, we will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Coach Coroma. Right, and that is correct. This is being recorded, so you can uh, refer back to it uh, to this at your leisure or uh, have your uh, significant other watch it or, or your child watch it later. Um, just to recap, because I know that we are short on time and we want to send you off on your way here because we so appreciate you being here tonight. Um, but really just wanted to wrap up with a... Uh, an overview of what's to come for the admission process. You are here with us tonight. Uh, you are part of one of our information sessions. Uh, we um, will provide you with many opportunities uh, to visit us, both virtually and in person. Uh, we will be offering some virtual shadow days coming up. We do have outdoor receptions. Uh, we offer you with some blog posts that will be coming to you and some, um, some deep dive emails as well. Uh, in addition to the virtual events that you'll be having. In terms of some of the uh, enrollment milestones and the decisions, really the important ones you see below there, the application is due on the 15th, the financial assistance application is due on February 1st. We review for February and then we release all of our decisions on March 5th and then uh, families will enroll with us uh, on March 19th. Uh,